considering long-term traveling? Well, there's a lot more involved than just getting that passport and those tickets. So stay tuned for four tips to how to prepare before you do any long-term travel. Is fear holding you back from traveling because you don't have anyone to go with? Are you concerned about being a woman traveling alone and not sure how to prepare for a solo trip? Do family and friends think you are crazy for even considering solo travel? Well, in this podcast, you will become equipped to travel safely by yourself. You'll learn things like tactical travel tips and how to prepare for a trip and how to overcome the fear so you can discover the transformation that travel can bring. My mission is to see more women over 50 discover how travel can empower them. If you want to enjoy your next travel adventure solo, then start your journey here. Hello, sister travelers. I'm Cheryl, solo travel advocate and travel coach. I have experienced life-changing adventures through travel, and I want the same for you. So stay tuned here every week and you will learn to find freedom through your travels, build your confidence while safely navigating new places. So sisters, you've caught the travel bug, have you? And you've already gone on maybe your first solo trip and you want to do more, right? Well, there's a way to do that. It's called long-term traveling. You know, anything beyond maybe that typical vacation time of two to three weeks, we're talking maybe a month, two months, maybe six months, maybe you want to go a whole year and take a little sabbatical, so to speak. Well, before you do that, you need to do some preparations, some serious preparations before that happens. And I'm sharing this because I am in that process right now. And so I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've had to do over this last year. Um, as I have considered doing more long-term travel. So first thing you must do when you're considering this lifestyle, and even if you plan to just do it, let's say, for example, just three months, and then you plan to come back and sort of resume this normal lifestyle that you've been doing. Well, even before that, you still want to adopt sort of a minimalist approach. Basically, you need to reduce your belongings. You need to get rid of things that you don't use, things you haven't used, things you don't like, and purge all those things. Now, this does take time, folks. I've been doing this process for a while, and I finally feel like I'm at a point. I'm still, right now, I have a few more things I want to sell and get rid of. But in general, I have really what I like and what I enjoy, what items bring me joy, just like Marie Kondo said, having those items in your life that bring you joy and not distractions. So reducing your belongings, getting rid of, especially in your clothes, right? Ladies, we have lots of clothes typically, and we have clothes that we haven't worn for years probably, or things that we go, well, what if maybe someday, right? Well, just get rid of them because those are actually hanging on your shoulders. They're they're like this ominous sort of, oh, only if I were that skinny, I could fit those jeans again. You know what? Just get rid of that reminder, right? And let's move on and let's get those belongings reduced. There could be some items that are of value and you might want to spend some time selling them. And so that's why you need a little extra time to do this process here. And then there's other things that you will likely just give away. Let me give you an example. I love books and I have accumulated lots of books over the years, but then I've also reduced a lot of my books. And again, in this move, every move that I make, I am reducing my books. Well, this particular move, as I'm packing up right now, I had another large box of books and I had considered selling them on Amazon to try to make some money for my trip. And I read some blogs and I know that you can do this on Amazon. And by the time you pay all those fees, you take all that time to um, log those books and mail them, which um, apparently you have to mail them and pay it for yourself, I guess. They will ship them out, but 
um, initially you have to mail them to Amazon. And a gentleman had given an example of, he had a, about how many books I had, I guess, and how he spent X amount of dollars and only made after all those fees and everything was taken out. I think he really only net netted $4. And so to me, that's like, well, that's really not worth my time. And so I ended up um, getting with some family and friends and asking them, hey, come look at my bookshelf, take whatever books you want. Some of that I liked because then if I wanted to get that book back or refer to it, then I knew somebody in my circle had that book. I also sometimes will drop some off at some of those free libraries that you see around neighborhoods or donate them to your local library. And then some of the books that are more popular, ones that are more recent, I did take to half price books and I did get some money. They don't give you a whole lot, but I felt really good about just unloading this big box of books. All right. So that's just an example. Other things, clothing, I tend to just give away. Um, And other things I do try to sell and give away. So reducing your belongings to things that only the things that you need and things that you love. So that does take time, folks. So start that now. If this is something you are considering, you want to do some long term travel. Um, And that way you can have less to do in this next step. Okay, your next step is to determine what you will do with your leftover belongings and what you will do with your apartment, your house, or your car. Okay, so these are all your material belongings. You have to determine, number two, what are you going to do with these things? Some people become become really radical and they they sell all this stuff, even their car, even their house. Um, And then they just either travel full-time, they move abroad or they fig- they decide they're going to figure things out um, once they get back or buy a new car when they get back. But if this is just temporary, maybe you just want to test the waters of living in this long-term travel lifestyle, then you have to determine what you will do with your belongings. So for example, for me, I have a storage unit that I will be using to store um, my belongings that I do have left over. Um, I also have a car that I haven't quite figured out what I will do with that yet, but I have also given my notice already to move out of my apartment. So that's one less step. If you have a house, some options that you can do with your house, if you don't feel like you're quite ready to sell it, then you could rent it out. You could also put it on Airbnb right? And make some money, which would be a great opportunity to help fund your long-term travel. So step two is determining what you will do with your belongings that you want to keep. I've gotten a storage unit for mine. Number three, big question I get, and I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't have all the answers because I'm still working on it as well. It is money the question of money. Well, how do you afford to do long-term travel? Well, there's a couple different options and really depending on where you're coming from. Maybe you have a lot of money already saved up or maybe you inherited a lump sum of money and so you're going to use that money to do your travels and that's perfectly fine. Um, But you also want to figure out, first step, maybe you're trying to figure out how much money you will need. That would be step one in this whole money issue is figuring out where you're going because depending on where you're traveling to or where you want to travel to will determine how much money you need. For example, Southeastern Asia is obviously going to be a lot cheaper than say some of the bigger cities in Europe. Uh, So you want to consider where you're planning to go because that will determine how much money you will need. You'll need to budget for your trip. Okay, so then with that in mind, then you can start saving to reach that goal. Some people also have invested money well, and so they are living off the interest, meaning they are able to use the interest from their investments to to fund their travels. So maybe that's you. Maybe you're really good at the stock market and you've been able to invest well. Or 
maybe you feel like you still need to work or you want to still work while you are traveling, then you would need to find a remote job. Maybe you already have a remote job. That is the beauty of the pandemic and what it transpired this whole work environment into. We have more remote jobs available out there now and many jobs can be done remotely. So maybe you can just speak with your current employer and see if that's a possibility. If not, then you can find other jobs that are posted that are actual remote jobs um, if you still need to work. There's plenty of other ways too to make income online and it doesn't have to necessarily be a you know a corporate full-time job maybe you're an entrepreneur and you have ways that you're able to continue having what we call passive income and that passive income can certainly be used to fund your travels which would be great because then you don't have to really work you can really enjoy your travels there So finding out, you know, budget, money, how are you going to save? What are you going to spend? And then are you going to work or not would be uh, step number three. Your fourth step most people kind of forget is if you are leaving for a long term, but let's just say maybe you're only going for a month and you may not need to do this at all. Okay. And maybe you have someone who's going to collect your mail and take care of that stuff at your house or your apartment while you're gone. But let's say you have decided to move out from all of that and you don't have a permanent residence, um, then you're going to need to set up a P.O. box. That way you can send those um, people, uh, people that would send you mail. Obviously, there's a lot of ways to get, you know, any kind of notices or bills um, electronically. But let's just say you do need an actual physical address. Maybe you need packages sent. At some point, uh, you will need to set up an address change and let people know of that address change. And the best option there is to set up a PO box. Unless you have a place, maybe you have a family member that will allow you to have your mail sent to their location for a short time. So considering that you got to have a place where things can get mailed to or an address that you might need to actually have in reference. Um, For example, when you do travel, a lot of places want to know when you enter a country, they want to know where you might be staying, you know, um, the name of the place, if it's a hotel or maybe the address. So I would imagine likewise, as you're maybe traveling to have that reference point of an actual physical address might be nice to have. So those are your four steps to just get you started if you are considering long-term traveling, okay? There is still a lot more of preparations, but these are things that you have to do way before you actually start to plan that trip. So number one, recap reduce your belongings. Number two, determine what you're going to do with your belongings or your house, apartment, car situation. Three, money, budget, save, remote job, whatever that is for you. And then number four, set up a PO box or have a address, a forwarding address to refer to. So stay tuned for, um, As I progress through this process myself, I'll be sharing other ways that as you move along in that whole idea of considering long-term travel, as you get closer to that actual point of stepping out and taking that leap to do it, I will share some steps that I've taken and some recommendations that I have for you. Sisters, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Remember to share this episode with anybody that you think would enjoy it and leave a review as a thank you to me. I would appreciate that as well. And remember, follow me on Instagram at Solo Travel Adventures 50. And also I have a Facebook community page that you can join as well. Solo Travel for women over 50. So check that out. And until next time, remember, be fearless, be bold, take that leap, and let's go on an adventure.